Hey horse people. Maybe I'll put this on my doggy channel if it works out to be good principles of conditioning. So I'm out here messing with Mr. T's feet. He moved on me because he smells a carrot. Come on over here. Come on over here this little bit. Come on. There you go. Good boy. I know. I know he smells a carrot. So he knows I have a carrot. He's not a carrot hound like Buddy. I can kind of put this by him. He's not going to grab it. It's kind of cold. He wants it, but you notice he doesn't. He's very anti. He's not going to try and reach out and grab this. He might give me a little bit. I tease him, but he's not going to snatch because he's just a different horse than uh, Buddy. But Buddy would be a little bit more. But I'm going to try and get him to use his nose. That's my finger. <laughs> Don't eat my finger. So I'm going to get him to use his nose. Now, I've talked about a twitch. And a twitch is where they put a rope around a nose here and they twist it and cause pain. And the idiots say, well, it releases endorphins and it feels good. To, it don't feel freaking good. You're hurting a horse. This is massaging this and feels good. This may release a little endorphin and he'll lick and kind of like he likes it. And you can't tell, but he's wiggling his nose. So, so that may release an endorphin. Why? Because that's what horses do when they see each other. They nuzzle and they rub. So it's a conditioning. Remember, you have classical and operant conditioning. And the way I could explain classical is classical conditioning is when the animal learns something that you didn't necessarily weren't trying to teach him. Uh, Pavlo, the dog, ring the bell, the dog slobbers, he gets food. That was classical. Operate conditioning is I want my dog to sit when I say sit, so when I say sit, I put his butt to the ground, pull up on his head, and I say sit, and then he learns to associate sit with putting his butt on the ground and lifting his head. So operate conditioning, another classical conditioning is when I was working canine as a police guy, when we re responded with dogs, my dog, as soon as I turned on the siren, as soon as I got on the radio and started calling out names or in a pursuit or anything, he heard my voice get tense and man, immediately started barking, got excited, would run circles in the back seat, bark, 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 all excited, knew that something was going to happen. I didn't mean to teach him that. That's not opera condition. That was classical. The horse learned, or the dog learned from his environment. So, and horses learn from classical and opera, but they learn on. They're prey animals, dogs are predator. Predators prey kill instinct, horses are flight instinct, survival, they're, they're food. Dogs look at horses as food, horses look at dogs as things that eat them as food. So predator and prey is important when you're changing the two. So what I'm going to try to do here is try to get Mr. T to nuzzle the back of my hand for a carrot. Now you know he, he doesn't, he's not going to do that because I haven't really tried this. But I'm going to try an opera conditioning but he's going to learn it not knowing that I'm teaching him this. So we're going to put a piece of carrot in my hand. I'm going to let him smell it. He's going to lick my hand, and then I'm going to give it to him. So that was my first trial. Now, i got to use small pieces or I'll run out of carrots. This is my last carrot. Buddy's out there saying, send carrots. He sees the carrot. I'm going to put it in my hand. I'm going to get him to do this, and then I'm going to give it to him. So that's twice. Let's see if he'll learn this in one carrot. Mr. T, Buddy would learn it quicker because he has a strong drive for carrots. Mr. T, not so strong. Rub his nose, then give him the carrot. See, now that, because the carrot wasn't big enough for him to see or smell, I messed up my trial and error. I screwed up the teaching because he didn't know there was a carrot, so he looked away. So now i got to kind of start over. i got to make sure he knows the carrot is there. Then I'm going to have him rub the nose, and then he'll get it. Try this again. Did he even eat it? He's like, dude, that's not a carrot. That's a breath mint. <laughs> okay, he's going to smell it. I'm going to rub his nose. He's going to get it. Maybe I should have given him give me a kiss. would have been easier. Because I'm running out of carrot. Smell it. Rub the nose, and he gets it. So if I did this enough, he would start, when I rub his hand, I get a piece of carrot. 
The bad side of that is now when I don't have a carrot, he'll be rubbing his hand on me. So I don't. I wouldn't teach a horse this long term. I'm just teaching this for experimental value. I'm actually going to shrink it down. I'm just going to hold my hand up and make him touch my hand. Touched it. He gets care. So I made it easy. Now I'm going to go lower and lower. Make sure he sees it. Touched it. Now he gets it. Sees it. Touches it. Now he gets it. See, I'm talking. And I'm screwing it up because he's hearing me talking to you. And normally, I say good people with horses keep their mouth shut. Dogs, same way. All my dogs were taught hand signals. Lay down, come, hit the deck, whatever. Sees it. He's got to touch my hand. <laughs> Miss T's like stupid human. I don't need that damn carrot. I ain't your trick monkey. Boom, touched it. So each time that is reinforced, and again, I talk about the training model, stimulus, response, reward. Stimulus, I'm waiting for a response. When I get the response I want, I give them the reward. Waiting, waiting, touch. He's just kind of touching me softly like he normally does. I want it more deliberate. Stimulus. Stimulus. Response, reward. Do you see how I modified my stimulus? Instead of hiding it, I let him see it and smell it. This is how you adjust when you're training, and that's why it takes somebody with some common sense to be able to adjust to train animals. If you just do it one way, you're going to get the same result. And if it's not working and you keep doing it, and then you blame the horse or the dog for being stupid, you're stupid. Rick, you can't call people stupid. Shut up, you big dummies. Touch, and he gets it. Stimulus. Touch. <laughs> and reward. That is a basic stimulus response reward. I, I know I got different ideas. I'm just giving to him because I don't really want to teach him this. I don't want him being a, a, a hound. I did this for demonstration purpose only to demonstrate how horses and animals learn things. It's because of what I do that they do what they do. If the horse or dog, sorry, Miss T, gives you the wrong answer, you did it wrong. If I get the right answer, I did it right. He knows my finger's not a carrot, luckily for me, or I'd be missing a finger right now. <laughs> he's got a good little boy and a little nose, and he's your good boy. He's like, dude, forget the good boy stuff. Give me a carrot. I know. Oh, money. Oh, there it is, good boy. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. I'm in the middle of doing his feet, and I needed a break because I was freaking hot. It's like 100 degrees out here, and I'm out here sweating my butt off. And I've only done, I just did a video on a horse channel where I did this run, one hoof, and that hoof I didn't do. And now I did one bottom of the back hoof, and I haven't touched that hoof yet. So I still have to finish the top of that hoof and then the complete two other hoofs. But I needed a break with a carrot. That carrot would not last two seconds if Buddy was over here. That thing would be an endangered species. Good old Mr. T's like, nah, eh, I could get to it, but it ain't worth it. I'm not going to move. I don't want to get Dad yelling at me. <laughs> All right, we'll end that there. Maybe I'll post this on a horse and doggy channel. All right.